So a Hoshavayid calls me last night. He's a Bacha, Hoshavabacha, intellectual individual. And he was talking about some of his experiences, the challenges that he's going through, the difficulties that he's experiencing. And uh, I tried whatever I could to try to be Machazikim in the Avoidus Hashem that he's required to do. And I'd like to share with you a little bit of what I said to him. I'd like to share with you some of the ideas that I spoke with him last night about, which I think could be beneficial for all of us throughout our lives, Bezus Hashem. So it's interesting, the Torah begins, Mamish, right in the beginning, Bereshis Borele Kim, Bayechule Shamayim, Bahoretz, all familiar with these words, with these psukim. If you look at the Archaim HaKadosh, the Archaim HaKadosh tells us that at that time, the entire creation was yearning for the Rabbi Nishalaylam, was yearning for the connection to the Melech Malchei Amlochim. But it doesn't go far. Just a few psukim later, in the middle of Parshas Bereshis, and the negativity sets in. The negativity begins. The Ibishta gives Adam Arishan one mitzvah, just one thing to do. And he failed miserably. We didn't even get through one parasha in the Torah. And already the entire creation was changed and transformed forever. With men having to go to work to make the parnasa, women going through childbirth, pain, even the animals suffered. We go to Parshas Noyach. We, don't even, we cannot, don't even begin the parsha, And we're already hearing how the sin, how the generation was, was seeped in Averas and sin and everything else. We just began the Torah. We just began the entire Torah and we're already holding the second parsha. And, and, and all of the creation are busy with Averas. So much so that the world needs to be destroyed and start all over again. Come to Parshas Lech Lecha. You got Lech Lecha. Avram Avinu. Nisayan after Nisayan after Nisayan. Test after test after test. An amazing thing. He has to Lech Lecha, go to a strange land. His wife was taken away from him. He didn't have children for years. All the tests. All this hardship. And so it goes on in the Torah. Yitzchak Avinu had his Nisayanus. Yaakov Avinu, Esau, Lovon, Yosef at Sadiq with the brothers, Ashes Poitifa, Mitzrayim, all of Klal Yisrael going down to Mitzrayim. Slaves for years and years. All this is what we're hearing about. The Torah begins, Bereshis Bar Lekim, Darachayim HaKadosh, all of Klal Yisrael are yearning and waiting for the Rabbi Nishalaylam. And then... Posik after Posik, Parsha after Parsha, with negativity, with sin, with Averas, with Nisyonas, with challenges. All that they should be ready to go to Kabbalah Satoya. Klali Sol in the Midbar, that wasn't easy either. I mean, you cannot go through the whole Torah, and that's all you hear. And Klali Sol are journeying to where? To Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi, so let me ask you, where does the Torah tell us about what happened in Eretz Yisrael? Where do we hear about Klal Yisrael's experiences in Eretz Yisrael? I mean, that was the goal, right? The goal was to get to Eretz Yisrael. No. So, what happened? How'd it go? Is, did, the, you know, did, did Eretz Yisrael give them what they're like? Where, where is it? Where is it in the Torah? What's going on over here? All right, so you open up and say, for you're sure, you see that the Rabbani Shlolam, you know, Taka fulfilled his promises, obviously. But it's not in the Torah. We don't hear anything. We don't see anything. What's the pshat? The Pshat obviously is. The Torah is not a storybook. The Torah is not just telling us things that we need to know as history. So we should know where we came from. It's much deeper than that. The Torah is telling us what life is. And the lessons that we can learn from the Torah are exactly learned from the stories that are brought in the Chumash, specifically in these parishes. And that is, life doesn't always go easy. Life has tremendous challenges. But the chizik that we get from how they dealt with it, with how they understood what a challenge was, what an Nisoyan was, 
That's the purpose of the Torah telling us the stories. That's why we're hearing parsha after parsha of things that went wrong, nisyonas, challenges, difficulties, because the Torah is telling us a lesson. Not always is it going to go easy. Not always is there a happy ending. You know, we hear Chesidah Shemaisas, Gvaldiga Maisas, unbelievable Maisas, and they're beautiful, beautiful Maisas. A Yid goes to his Rebbe, he has a problem, he has an issue. The Rebbe tells him what to do, and the end of the story, he has the Yeshua. Wow, Gvaldiga Maisa. So now we know that the Rebbe is a Gvaldiga Balmoifis. Now we know that he could do anything. He's a, he's, a, he's a Novi, he's got Ruach HaKodesh, he's a Balmoifis, he could do anything whatsoever. That's not the lesson from the story that we should, we should be learning. That's not the lesson. A Yid Cain, the Rebbe of Meilach, he had a problem with Parnassa. And the Rebbe of Meilach told him, I need you to buy a certain amount of flock, of cattle, of animals, and this and that. And the other, they told him what to buy. The Yid, listened to the Rebbe. He bought everything, put all his money into it, invested everything that he had. And he lost all his money. What's the end of the story? The end of the story was that he still has a shaykhus with his Rebbe. That he still had a connection with his Rebbe. It wasn't the end of the story necessarily that tells us the point of what's going on. But it was the journey through how he got there. That's what the Torah is telling us. The Torah is telling us, parsha after parsha. No, it's not going to be easy. Life is challenging. Don't fool yourself. Don't think for one minute that when you leave this base measures, which is a beautiful mockim of Dalakosa Shalalacha, a mockim of Torah, a mockim of Shurim, of Rebbeim, beautiful. But when eventually a person leaves it, don't think for one minute life is just going to be smooth sailing. There are going to be challenges. And there are going to be many challenges. And our job is how to deal with them. How should we look at those challenges? Just to mention one, last week's parasha, parasha's Vayera, Avada, we know. Me'etzim, it's a Mishnah and Perki Yavis that tells us clearly that Avram Avinu had ten Yisrinus, ten tests, ten challenges. And Avada, Avram Avinu passed all of them, that's not a Kalsha. And the pinnacle of all of his achievements, according to many, was the Akedah Yitzchak. Akedah Yitzchak, we'll speak about it in a minute. The Akedah Yitzchak, that he was willing to sacrifice the son that he loved. And all of Avram Avinu's philosophy of where the world should be going and how things should happen. And the Rabbi Nishalonim's instructions went completely against that. But no, Avraham Avinu didn't listen to his mind, to his seichel, to his understanding of history and the world and philosophy. Avraham Avinu listened to one thing and that's the Malach Malchem and the Rabbi Nishalonim. It's hard, I've heard of it's hard. But we have to do what we have to do. And he passed with flying colors. And not only that, the Torah tells us very, very clearly in Chav Beis, Yud Beis, Parashas Vayera, after the Rabbi Nishalayim says, don't touch him. What, is what does the Torah say? Ki ato yodati ki yore ato. Now I know that yo yore kim. What do you mean now I know? What now I know? Avram Avinu, he discovered the Rabbi Nishalayim himself. Now I know. When you know how to pass challenges, when you know when life is tough and you don't give up and you keep on going and you keep pushing forward and you understand where it's coming from and where it's going to get you, now I know that you're Yireli really Kim. Now I know where you're coming from. To quote Mike Tyson, he once said that everybody has a plan until he gets punched in the face. You know, certain times we're so busy, we're learning Emunah and Betochen, and we're learning Chayvah Salavavas, and we're learning all these things, and all of a sudden, a challenge comes and boom, a whole world just falls down. Everything changes, and we're like, hey, what happened to my Emunah? What happened to all the Betochen that I've been learning? What happened to all the things that I've been talking about, learning about, discussing? All of a sudden, a challenge comes and boom, the whole world falls apart. The answer is no. We're dealing with very high levels sometimes. But we have to recognize that every challenge has a purpose. The Ramban says that the reason that the Rabbi Nishalolam challenged Avram Avinu was because he wanted to raise him up. And the Ramban has a Mahalach, how he explains how Lashon Nisoyin is that way. But Al Kapano, every Nisoyin has a purpose. It raises us up. It gives us an opportunity to get closer to the Rabbi Nishalolam. I told this last night to this boy. He's going through a different parsha. It's not easy. He's getting older. Shidduchim are not going easy. Other things are happening in his life that are also challenging. And I told him like this. I said, enjoy the journey. 
Life is not just about the destination. It's also about the journey. You're going through a journey. It's difficult, it's hard, it's challenging. Embrace, embrace the challenges. We don't ask for challenges, nobody wants challenges, and we govern every single Danish Manasra that we should never have challenges. But when we get those challenges, let's remember that those challenges are the greatest opportunity of growth. It's a journey of life that, that takes us in the direction that we can become greater people, more connected people, and more spiritually connected as well to the Rabbi Nishalayim. A Yid came once to Rav Aaron Leib, Zatzal. Kolon young man, he's sitting in Kolon Yom and Veloila. Comes to Rav Aaron Leib, Zatzal, and he says, Rabbi, I don't understand. I had a Yerusha, one of his parents, Rahman Letzlan, Lalein Lalechem, or Lifta, and I got a Yerusha, nice amount of money. Decided, like, what do I know about business? So I asked somebody else, he's going to help me. He told me, invest it in such a company, invest it in such a guy, Be'ez Hashem, you make a lot of money, you won't have to work too much, you won't have to be a vatal Torah too much, you'll be able to marry after kids, everything will be gavaldic. So no problem, I listened, I invested it. The guy was a trickster, he ran off with all my money. I'm left with nothing, zero. Now I have nothing to marry off, my kids have nothing to put bread on the table. What, what, what's the shot? He came to Rara Nebel, he said, Rabbi, I don't understand. Why did the Rabbi Nishim do this to me? I'm sitting in Koilo, I'm sitting and learning by Smod Gedoyla. Why would the Rabbi Nishim do this? Trevor and Leib said to him, you're looking at it completely wrong. You have, to, you, have the, you have the completely wrong look at the whole thing. And he said, you're sitting and learning. Now, the Rabbi Nishan wants to give you Nisayin. <laughs> what Nisayin is going to give you? A Shver Okay, it's also Nisayin. That's not a real Nisayin that you need to, you know, struggle to fight life's challenges. So he gave you this Nisayin. He gave you this opportunity. He wanted to see how you're going to deal with it. That, said Rav Aaron Leib, is the purpose of every challenge that we have. As the Masilis Shisham says in Perik Aleph, Kol inyane oilam nisyonis heim lo'odom. Everything is in a sign. The question is how we deal with it. A Yid calls me. A Yid calls me for Williamsburg, and he says to me, Agav, he says to me, by the way, I do, I, I, he says to me, I do a few Averis. I said, uh, why are you calling me? He says, oh, I want to tell you, I do two Averis. The first Averi is that I have internet in my home. So, you know, the second Averi says, I listen to Shurim in English. So, I always have Averi, I listen to your Shurim. Then he says to me, I want you to know, 12 years I didn't have children. 12 years. You know what that means? The pain, the tsar, of not having a child for 12 years. We should never know. It's so difficult, it's painful. I've spoken to many people that are in those situations. It is painful. And he said to me the following, Rabbi Isai, 12 years without a child. He said, do you know that my connection with Hashem is so great now that it never would have been as good if I didn't have this challenge? He said I would never reverse anything. Of course, I would have rather not had it, whatever. But I never will reverse it because the connection that I have to Hashem because of the challenge that He gave me is unlike any other. Rabbi said, those are the challenges. That's life. That's what the Torah is teaching us. There was a bar mitzvah boy that got up here in Yerushalayim to give the drosha. You can imagine his parents were all excited to hear the drosha, the nachas from his son. So he gets up to speak. He gets up and he says, Katuv, Mesechtus Yevomus, Kufyud Beis, Sementar. That's the meaning, right? Okay, so he smiles, he sits down. So the rov next to him, Says no. Get up again. Okay, fine. Say no. Gets up again. Katuv, Mesechtus Yuvomus, Tafkuf Yud Beis, Sementav. Okay, everybody's smiling and laughing. Gets down, sits down. The Rob next to him turns to him. Okay, get up again. Oh, a third time? Okay, say no. Chazoka. Gets up again. Katuv, say it. It happened eight times until he finished the entire Joshua. Everyone realized that's no joke. It will be there all night. Finish the drosha. The Mitzvah boy sat back down. He felt like a million dollars. Wow, I finished my drosha. I actually said it. Great. He was prepared. His parents got nachas. It was great. The Rob next to him turned to him and said, Young killer, my dear Mitzvah boy, I'll tell you why I did what I did. I'll tell you why I did what I did. Because I want to teach you a lesson. In life, there are going to be many challenges. There are going to be many things that are going to cause you to just want to sit down, curl in your bed, and just forget about everything that happens. But no, that's not a mahalach. The mahalach of life is to get up and keep on going and grow with the challenges that you have. That, 
said this Rebbe to this Bar Mitzvah boy was the purpose why he made him do what he did. And that's something we have to realize. The yes, there are challenges. And yes, we all want to be perfect, but the road to perfection comes through imperfection. The way that we become greater people is by going through the challenges. If you look at successful people, look at successful people in any parts, whether it's Yiddishkeit, people that have been successful in Ruchnius, or have the Elef of Dolores, people that were successful in the business world, or in Goyish Zach, and whatever it may be. Look at successful people, and you will find that basically every successful person in any aspect of life went through a challenge, went through challenges, and he grew from those challenges. And that's what made him strong. That's what made him who he is today. Embrace the challenges that you get because it's those challenges that make us who we are and that keeps us going. Rabbi said there's a Gemara in Shabbos that pay test. The Gemara says, who's bringing Moshiach? Rabbi said, we need Moshiach. Who's bringing Moshiach? So the Gemara says, and there's Medrashim, and there's Chazals in all different directions. But the Gemara says, Yitzchak's bringing Moshiach. Why is Yitzchak bringing Moshiach? Because Yitzchak goes to Hashem and he said, listen, Hashem, I offered myself as a carbon. No, Klal Yisrael should be redeemed. And Hashem says, okay, you're right, you're right. Frank the Piyatzatzna, I don't understand. So if Yitzchak has the courage to bring Moshiach, no, what's he waiting for? Go up there. Tell the Rabbi Shalom, we need Moshiach. It's only getting worse, as the Haile Gabbadich said. What's going on? Why is he waiting? Listen to the answer of Isaac the Piyatzatzna. Eish Kodesh. He says, because the Akedas Yitzchak was a Gavaldiga act of Messias Nefesh. And we are gaining the results, the merits, the schosim ada yoim we say Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, avada. But it was incomplete. Why was it incomplete? Because it never happened. Meaning, yes, avada, Avram Avinu wanted to do it, and Yitzchak agreed to it, sure. But Lemaisa, the act of Messias Nefesh, the act of Shechita, the act of killing, never took place. Which means, says the Piyatzatzna, it's actually incomplete. It's not a complete act of Messias Nefesh. And therefore we need to complete it, and then Yitzchak can go and say, let's bring Moshiach. Asks the Piyatzatzna, okay, so how do we complete it? And he brings two Mahalchim. Mahalach number one, which we're not going to discuss, which a great Sarichas he brings, is through Yidin that die al-Kiddush Hashem. A Yid that dies al-Kiddush Hashem, in any situation, any type of Yid who dies al-Kiddush Hashem, he's completing the Akedas Yitzchak. And the second thing he says, Rabbi says, Nagayat to us. He says, any mysterious nefesh, any exertion, physically, emotionally, spiritually, that a person gives up for the Rabbi Nishalaylam, it's difficult, it's hard, it's challenging, I'm not interested, I'm bored, I don't want to do this, I have other things I want to do, I don't like this. Anything that a person does, he pushes himself in Yiddishkeit, and he gives up some of himself for the Rabbi Nishalaylam, the Piyatzetzan, Eish Kodesh, that's an act of mysterious nefesh. That's completing the Akedas Yitzchok. That's bringing Moshiach just that little bit closer with every act that we do, with the challenges that we have. And we're just going to end with one last idea. From a 35-year-old man, his name is Tommy Caldwell from Colorado, was known to be one of the greatest rock climbers of all time. He's just known to just do anything. He could climb any, any wall, he could scale that amazing, amazing skill that he had. And he was brought over by a certain organization in North America to try and discuss his you know, successes. And at one point during the interview, they discussed one particular idea that he had. He wanted to scale down the wall of a very, very tall, steep wall without any equipment, no ropes, no safety nets, no safety catches, no ladders, no pegs, nothing. He's going to scale down that wall. No one has ever done it. Not only has no one ever done it, he has tried three times, and he was about to start his fourth attempt. And they said, why? Why are you doing it again? No one's done it. You've tried three times. It hasn't worked. What are you trying a fourth time for? And he said like this, you want to know why I keep going back? Because I go back because the climb is making me better. It's making me stronger. I'm not failing, I'm growing. That is what he understood what failure was. Failure doesn't mean that. It means that every failure we take is a step in the right direction to success. Rabbi Isai, as I told this Bocha last night, and I want to tell every single one of you, 
life is going to have many challenges. We daven that it doesn't. We daven every day that it doesn't. But the Mitzvah says life is going to have challenges. Embrace those challenges. Understand why we get those challenges. And use those challenges for growth. Because those challenges can make us the strongest and most connected people in Kladisvall. Shkoyach. <laughs>